Hey guys, it's Jason Timothy here, MusicSoftwareTraining.com, back with another video. And today I wanted to show you how to create dynamic effects. And what I mean by dynamic effects is that when you hit a note softer, you have less effect. When you hit a note harder, you have more effect. Let me give you an example here. So we have some strings here and then we have some effects. And as you can see, the drive here is zero and the wet dry on this is zero as well. And when I hit softly, you'll see these move a little bit. And when I hit the note harder, you'll notice that tail lasts a lot longer and it's got a much bigger sound. So you can play melodies of some sort Like that where certain notes will have more effect than others. So this could be really helpful in giving you more dynamics in a sound and making your sound more interesting. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be reverb or basic effects. You can you know create some pretty interesting effect chains that you are able to process your sound with by velocity. So with that let me show you how we get to this place. So I'm just going to make a new track here and we'll just grab instrument. I think that was Mtron. There we go, Mtron strings, drag that in and then we will grab our effects. So in this case, we're grabbing a saturator and we'll set this to soft sign, turn on the soft clip and then we'll grab a reverb. We're going to turn the decay time up quite a bit because by default this is at zero percent. So only when this wet dry comes up are we going to hear the decay. This is always going to be at a hundred percent and then depending on the velocity this drive will come up and down. So once we got this here we want to highlight all this and then Command G or Control G if you're using a PC. And then we're going to add another layer here. I'm going to just pull in an operator instrument. And we're going to turn this off because we don't want to hear it. But we're going to set this to noise. And then the envelope, we'll just leave it like this and then we're going to have a long decay. Let's say almost nine seconds, that, that's fine there. And what's, what's going to happen is because of this long decay, because this is going to be triggering our reverb and saturation. So by having a long release, it will turn the knob up and then slowly turn the knob back down. So, so after we've done this, we want to grab an envelope follower. So in Ableton 10, which we're in right now, we would just go into Max for Live and then find it here. So now what we want is we want to map the envelope follower. So basically what, what the envelope follower does is it recognizes when things get louder or less loud. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to turn the velocity sensitivity all the way up. That way when I map something the soft notes are not going to be very noticeable, going to be quiet. Here I can show you here just by turning the noise on real quick. soft notes or loud notes. All right, so we'll turn that back off. That's going to be triggering our sounds. So now what we want to do is we want to map those sounds. So we're going to hit map. Then we can come over to our Mtron chain and we'll map this to the dry wet on the reverb. And we will set this to Let's set it to 88%. And then we can come in here and I'm going to map this to the saturator. Drive right here. 
And as you can see, this is minus 36. We don't want that. So we're going to come over here, set this to 50%. And if we come back over here, you can see that now it's at zero again. And we don't want a whole lot of drive. So what we'll do is we'll just bring this down to, let's say, 60. 60 is fine, actually. We'll just bring it down to 60. And now, what you'll notice with the wet dry here in the drive is when I hit notes softly, you don't notice a whole lot, but when I hit it harder, you get a lot more of that reverb sound. Now if we turn the reverb completely off on the original sound, then we can really notice a difference. So yeah, explore with this. You could do this with any effect that you want. So that's how you make dynamic effects in effect racks. And this can get as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. But the bottom line is it just gives you much more expression to your sounds. So I hope this helps. Go ahead and put it to use and enjoy.